All right, so uh, right before you hit the button, uh, uh, my name is Mark, as Ty said, and we're going. All right, Flywheel, we, we allow you to hail, track, and pay for a taxi from your smartphone. And um, we were previously named Cabulous. We started here in San Francisco, and we're, we actually have almost every taxi in San Francisco on our system, kind of like another company uh, that's, that's in this space. Uh, we're also in Seattle, Los Angeles, 10 other metros. That's just a little bit of a background about what we're doing. Um, the way we look at this is, you know, people have been taking taxis for a long time. They're passengers, they're drivers. How do you put those people together and create a delightful experience in a much more efficient way than has been going on previously? And so, if you think about the things that people complain about with taxis, uh, they are things like, I call on the phone and I'm not sure if they're going to show up. Um, you know, it takes a long time. I don't even know when they're going to get there. And some cabs are dirty, some drivers are bad, they're rude, they drive too fast, or they're on their phone. So the way we're solving those things are things like using an app instead of calling the phone. Show the driver on the map coming towards you with a real ETA. Use ratings to filter out bad drivers and, and dirty cabs. And then payment, you know, both how you pay and tipping, allowing the passenger to actually control that without that uncomfortable interaction that takes place when you just pay with cash. Uh, but then there's some stuff that you can't solve entirely in the app. Sometimes a driver cancels on a passenger. Sometimes drivers don't accept at peak times. Um, and so we needed to do, do more. We need to, beyond the features that were in there, we needed to actually figure out a way to modify behavior of the drivers um, using communication and other things. So two case studies. One, sometimes drivers were canceling on passengers after they had accepted it. This is actually sort of a cultural thing that taxi drivers were used to doing with phone disp dispatch, which is why you wouldn't get a ride sometimes. Um, so we said, hey, don't do that, and you're going to start getting blocked uh, if you do that. And then you can see what happened here. First we talked to them, and then we put stuff in the product and, and took that cancel rate all the way down. Uh, second example, um, sometimes, and I need this slide to catch up, sorry. Um, oh, oh, no, and so one driver who was adamant that we were really messing with the industry said, you know, I didn't like this cancellation policy. He, he writes a blog in the city, his name's Ed Healy, great guy, he said, now I get it. I get it, we're trying to preserve the passenger experience. This is the only way taxis are gonna survive in the future is to be competitive in that way. Second thing, sometimes drivers weren't accepting enough, except, especially at peak times. We said, hey, please accept more rides. And we showed a meter and a graph and you know, gamified it a bit, we added some bonus programs and so on, because we can't do surge pricing because of uh, rates. And it made a big difference. Uh, the local ABC affiliate did a survey, and in San Francisco, if you push the button, a flywheel taxi is going to pull up in about three minutes, and that matches our internal statistics. Um, but there's still a lot of stuff that we can do. Um, some drivers think they can accept a ride sort of while they're on the way to drop someone else off, and we <laughs> we've added some detection of that. Um, sometimes, you know, the driver says, I'm here, the passenger says, I'm here, and they're missing each other. We're going to add some stuff so that they definitely meet up. Um, and then on the other side, some drivers had bad experiences too. Passengers were, you know, not showing up because they called five taxis and then just took the first one. Sometimes they were rude or they trashed the vehicle in ways you can imagine. And so uh, we added some stuff in the product to do that. We warn them if they're doing that. Drivers can rate passengers. Uh, and drivers actually tell us that Flywheel passengers are nicer than people they get through other means. Um, finally, fleets are, are another constituent that we, we sort of help because they help manage all this. Um, but they have problems with paying drivers, and drivers are upset because it takes a week for them to get their money sometimes. So we now ACH them. Um, and there was something else there that I'll, you'll never know about. Um, finally, uh, ratings. <laughs> ratings, you know, both, it go in both ways, but it's a feedback mechanism both for the driver as well as the fleet. Um, and it, it means that we've actually been able to take the best drivers of San Francisco and make them available to you. Um, just a couple observations. GPS is really cool. Uh, I think we're only at the surface of what we can do with it, where we just see the patterns of flow in the city and we can learn from that. We can estimate a lot of things very interestingly. Finally, there's a, a few other use, use cases that people have been doing for years that we haven't matched yet. One is, hey, I want to get a taxi for that person, like a bartender wants to hail a taxi for a customer. Hey, I want to get picked up at 4.30 tomorrow morning. I don't want to open my phone and then hope you know, that it, it comes in the right time. Um, corporate stuff, and you know, there's other 
things taxis are used for, like o organ delivery. Are act, you know, they actually use the fleets in San Francisco, so we might be able to help with that. And then finally, sharing rides, and I'm done.